What's up guys, we are on the golf course where I am terrible at golf against some real golfers here. I got a head up balance, $500 says I beat this man in golf today. Heads up. I get to talk gear in your backswing and everything. This shot is for birdie. All these guys know what they're doing. I don't know shit. I'm gonna win this putt though. Oh. <laughs> he did it. He did it. Damn it. Bogey. Yeah. Birdie. Hell of a drive, though. Not an What's up, YouTube? I've got an exciting guest here for this episode and an important topic for roofers, contractors everywhere. How does the game of golf, roofing sales, growth in your contracting business relate? How can you mix business with pleasure? Uh, I'm here with Jason Walsh. I met him in my boxing gym. He's the COO of RRCA, and he's quickly been able to come into my company, help me really, really implement better processes, better profitability. He's helped us really upgrade our accounting departments, our customer service and customer care department, and he's a really uh, avid golfer. He was actually uh, retired, playing golf every day, working out at the boxing gym just kind of to mix it up. Whenever we uh, ran across each other and started talking business, man, welcome to the Blue Collar bo Boardroom. Jason, how you doing this morning? Wonderful. Uh, happy to be here. Thank you. Me and Jason, uh, what do we get done doing this weekend? We just, what do we just get done doing? Uh, we were in Panama City Beach at one of our uh, locations, and um, we hosted a amateur golf event uh, in Panama City Beach. And it was nice because not only was it a hosted an amateur event, uh, it was also a charitable event uh, with proceeds going to the Folds of Honor. Look, that's one thing for my mentor, Russell Brunson, that I've been thinking a lot of. You you know, it's you want to earn more, you better give more. And you know, that's what this channel really is about. If y'all are watching this, appreciate the followers, the support. Uh, like, subscribe, get notifications, because it's all about you. And we took out on the golf course a practice round where I got my ass kicked. Um, bet Jason 500 bucks. I still owe you 500 bucks. <laughs> yes, you do. And uh, I'm going to tell you I'll get that thing. out of petty cash if necessary. You're, you're going to see the insides of it. Oh, boy. He muffed it. No doubt. Good, tough hole for me. I go. I try to go out to this golf course. I have these uh, ideas of grandeur. A lot of times, you know, I'm so busy working right now, buddy. I hadn't been able to play golf. I've been doing a lot of the it boxing. Showed. It, it showed in your golf game. <laughs> it takes four hours to play around and I've got two different businesses and all the different growth and stuff. And so I'm not practicing. I'm not on the field. And, you know, here's the thing, you know, you can go in there. I said in the beginning that I was going to visualize my shots, that I was going to have faith in my effort, that I was going to continue this path. And I, when I'm not tired, know how to swing a golf ball. I have a good swing. It's really the mental fall apart. Whenever Basically, one shot happens, and my brain starts thinking about how I've run the round, and I start really getting way ahead of the one shot in front of me. Yeah. And the cool thing about golf, you know, I got from Cagney, who shot at 81 this day, was he's like, dude, look, each shot you get to start over, or right. each, each hole you get to start over, and even each shot you get to start over. And if you take it one shot at a time, one hole at a time, and you're able to wipe the slate clean from the past – you know, I think that's one thing that really contractors struggle with. They 
make a mistake. They beat themselves up about it. They think about what they've done for their year, what they're going to be able to do. What you know, and it's all about this idea. They they identify themselves as a good golfer and a good roofing company, but yet what they're doing is not lining up with that. And it's like this book I'm reading from Tim Grover. It's like winning. You, you, the I, the person of who you are versus who you actually are, you find out because essentially, you know, you're either trained for it, you either are conditioned for it, or you're not. And uh, you know, we go out here, hit a few bad shots. As actually, you're you're bad hole. You had a bad hole, and I was like, uh, man, I'm gonna beat him. I'm gonna beat him. And uh, you know, the truth is, is if I'd have just stuck in the game, I might have had a chance to play a good round, but. I started shanking balls and got in my own head thinking about what I'd done in the past, what was coming in the future, and I wasn't focusing on the shot right in front of me. Yeah. And when it came time to visualize the shot, I found myself doing the opposite, visualizing shanks, seeing myself, you know, you get, you get a little anxious, you start not having that confidence. Right. And so I think for me, that's the biggest um, place that I see contractors, they get an analysis paralysis of the future, they can't. They, they, and and they, they look at what the mistakes they've made in the past, and then they can't do the right thing with what's right in front of them. Right. And they just fuck it up. So, Well, I think, I think one of, a couple correlations. What Cagney said is that you start over each hole each, each time. If you're going to go knock 18 doors, you knock on a door and you meet with somebody, hole number one, you make the drive. You make your pitch to the person. And let's say that person says, no, I'm not interested. Something happened. It didn't go well. You weren't able to get to the kitchen table for whatever reason. Your second shot went in the water, whatever. The first hole didn't go very well for you as your drive and your approach shot and your putt. That lady didn't really want to talk to you very much. No problem. First hole ended. First door knock didn't go very well. Guess what? Move on to second hole. Move on to the neighbor, right? Be optimistic. Second hole, you go and you hit a nice drive. You're, re- you're saying, okay, first one didn't go well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be great on this second one. Part of that visualization. Second hole, great. You move on to the next one, knock on the door. The person says, yeah, I, I, I do have some struggles. Can you go up on my roof? I'd, I'd love for you to see if I, if I have any problems. And then all of a sudden, you're, you're, you're reinvigorated and you're excited, right? Because this lady now ha- says, or a guy says, go up on my roof, make it happen. So what happens on hole number two? Now you're happy. Dude, isn't it funny how hitting a good golf shot will get you right back in the Brings game? Brings you right back in the game. You could go through 16 holes. This is the Phil Mickelson disease. Phil Mickelson says, I go for eagles all the time. I might have horrible shots all the time, but the one time I get an eagle or have a great shot, it brings me back. So let's say you go through 16 doors, you get shot down at all 16, but hole 16, you stripe that drive, you smack that three wood, and you make the putt for an eagle, what does that make you feel? It makes you feel like a million bucks. And I'll tell you what, uh, they it says the most important space in golf. What's the most important, uh, what do they call it, measure? Well, you drive for what? show and you putt for dough. That's right. But I was thinking about the, the – it's it was, in, it was in the card on the golf course that said the most important space in golf is the five inches between your ears. And it's also the most important spot for – sales and right. for uh, growing a roofing company. And it's so funny. I take it. I do not take it personal when people tell me no. I get all jacked up a little bit and I want to get the last word and be agreeable and not unprofessional so I can close the door. Yeah. But on on that cell, so I don't ever have to think about it again, but I don't really take it to the next place. But I take the next golf shot. Right. And I do take it personal when I shank a ball or, or like when I hit the ball off the tee and it didn't make it to the ladies' tee box and I should have I had to pull down my underwear and run around like a little girl. But the point is, yeah. dude, I don't identify as somebody who dribbles balls still. I did that when I first started, got, you know, but I still do it if, if, if I'm not, you know, just really uh, looking at the ball all the way through is what it comes down to. If you don't, in sales, if you don't perform the function of sales each and every step, chances are it might slip through the cracks and you won't make the sale. Am I right? Absolutely. So if you... If you do the proper steps in golf and hit the ball, follow through, don't swing too hard, whatever that steps are for you, you can maybe get that par, maybe get that birdie. And if you go through the steps in the sales, you might get the sale. You might fall through. You may not get it. So follow. They're, they're identical. Well, and after 16 holes, you might get it. But the goal after 18 holes 
or my day on the golf course or my day knocking doors, I hope to be successful. I hope to make some nice round, a nice round, a whole day. I hope the holes are good. I hope, and out of 18 doors I knocked, I hope I've got some sales. Well, and you know about being in momentum and being in practice. And I'll tell you, recently we had Jared on the podcast. He's going yeah. around knocking doors all the time. I'm not always. I'm sometimes being the CEO, not always knocking doors. He's in that groove. He's playing his game. He's got his handicap low. And yeah. so he's got a little bit more confidence. And whenever I'm out there trying to you know, knock and compete against him on these I'm taking a little bit more intense. I'm I'm going in a little bit with a different kind of uh, edge. And a lot of times for me, I have to get into that swing. Even if I'm really a great door-to-door -door salesperson naturally, I still have to practice, get into the flow. Yeah. I have to train and it's like muscle memory. And so with golf, you know, if you're not going to the range, if you're not practicing on your swing, if you're not constantly working on all aspects of your game, then you go out on the golf course and you get destroyed mentally. Yeah. And once you're questioning your abilities while you're approaching the ball, that's where you dribble the ball. That's where you hit it out of bounds. And it's really being able to just have so much of that muscle memory ingrained into you that allows you to not have to think about it. Right. And that's also why it's important for roofing salespeople to train, to show up to the office, to know where they're going to go, to train in an online university, to role play with their peers, to be the only way to be great at something is to be frequent. I thought, well, you have a good golf swing. You're naturally athletic. You've been boxing more. Maybe this you're going to have a great round because you're more flexible. <laughs> has nothing to do with the fucking goddamn finishing the <laughs> finishing the shit. I mean, y'all saw me out there getting I, the cameraman before we got to this poor ram. I'm poor guy. I was like, get the fucking camera out of my face. I was so pissed I was leaving. Dude, I hate losing. I fucking hate losing. I know there's a lot of contractors watching this that hate not being able to make the sale, hate not being able to scale the company, hate not being able to get out of their own way and recruit, hire, train, and yet we make the same mistakes. And for me, if I want to be good at golf, I got to go and spend the time. For one, I got to go get a coach. Uh, you know, me, I always know that getting a coach is a cheat code, but I've never had a consistent golf coach. And I have a good, you have boxing coaches, jujitsu coaches, and I would never try to learn all that stuff or master that stuff without someone constantly standing over my shoulder. So, I'm going to go out. I'm going to get me a golf coach. That's The pros have a swing coach. They have a head coach. They got athletic coaches. They have all these things, and they practice all day long. They could put 12 or 14 hours a day to be the best. If you want to be the best roofing salesman, you can't do it in two hours a day. You have to practice every day, even on the pitch. Amen. And look, if you want help scaling your roofing company or roofing sales division, I want to make sure you don't miss out on the opportunity to get personal help from me. I want you to see five case studies of contractors that we've helped double, triple, quadruple sales. And if you're a guy that has a company and you want to take it to the next level, you want to dominate your market, I highly suggest you go to tothemooncontractor.com. Check that out. But you know what we want to do is we want to create guys that are storm catchers, not storm chasers. Um, if you're in insurance restoration, we do a combination of insurance and retail. In Panama City, we got a lot of retail. We're also uh, really pushing the solar department there. A lot of these people in this area have already gotten roofs, and in some of them from us. So we were selling solar, talking about the people that are there's an epidemic of people overpaying for power. We're talking about how energy prices went up because all the damage from the hurricane and how they can have an opportunity to get a fixed rate opportunity to get zero money down solar costs and immediately save money. Some people as much as half of their electrical bill. So it was a great way to get some new clients. This golf tournament sponsored by RRCA. Um, unfortunately, after my half around, I said, fuck that. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that somebody else was going to be keeping my score. Also didn't know I wasn't going to be playing like a four man scramble where we play best ball. But I will tell you, I was thinking three whole days of playing like a real professional golf that was like torture to me and I'm working on a book. And so I'll tell you, like I didn't train. I, I knew that y'all had the RRCA back and I knew that prioritization for me was, you know, your son was there and you know, he, he you got to play with your son and yep. it's really cool what we were able to accomplish on this trip because um, kind of want to break down uh, how we were able to, do a recruiting event. Yeah. Um, you know, Jason's son works, uh, he's, he's, he's actually a senior at Florida State University, and we pull into Tallahassee right to the bumping. What was going on over there, man? 
You pulled us into the hood. <laughs> they, they were partying. They're partying. It's a frat house. Yeah. We pull right into the frat house. Jason's son is the is the head party master at the uh, at the frat house. Social director. Social director. Party master. Finance guy. Finance guy. Keeps up with the money to fund the parties. So our RCA is going to fund some of their parties. And here's the deal. It's always been about the party. Getting a group of people together is one way to get attention on your business's cause. One of my missions is to, in young people, instill to save the trades, to get uh, this stigma with being in a working class or blue collar, your, your son wants to be in the bank, banking business. Yeah. You know, and, and no, no skin off. Anyone else to go into the banking business, got an internship with Bank of America, great. Um, I just think that there's just as much equal opportunity in the blue collar world and it shouldn't be looked down upon and you should have an opportunity to, you know, take a pick, to look at it. And then um, his son or his, his friend, he brought with him, his dad uh, was once the vice president of the PGA Tour. So I felt like us having a recruiting event and really kind of using this opportunity for your son's last year in Florida State to be a, a year-long pursuit of uh, students at Florida State. Uh, a calendar of different uh, fun parties, events, promotional-type opportunities for RRCA to get the message out to people and be known in the campus, and then us to be involved in the business school and the career fairs, and to have a bunch of recruiting events surrounded around uh, you know our base in, in Florida State, which is your son. But, you know, talk to us a little bit about um, you've seen us do a couple of these recruiting events and the benefit of getting everybody in the room. And it's a quote that I get from Ed Milet says, never miss an opportunity to sell your vision to the team. Yeah. So what do you think a recruiting event does for new people, uh, people that are um, interested in working with us? And, you know, tell us a little bit about what, what that was about. Well, recruiting, we're, we're always recruiting. Recruit, recruit, recruit. Always. It always has to be on our mind, and it always is. Um, the nice thing uh, with this recruiting event, it was it was tied into the golf uh, event in Panama City Beach. It was tied in with a charity event, and so it was more popular because we had other things as opposed to us just saying, oh, Thursday night we're having a recruiting event, which does work. But this was nice because it was a good party atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It was a fun atmosphere. It brought lots of people together. Um, sometimes when you're recruiting, it's not just saying me, hey, Lee, I want to recruit you into my business. Sometimes you want to bring an audience, and they don't even know they're being recruited. And they don't even know the opportunity that's ahead of them. And all of a sudden, they realize, hey, I want to be part of that. It's exciting stuff. This company out there, RRCA, that's the title sponsor of this group, they give back. I want to be part of that. So we put together a huge persona. We were the title sponsor. Coca-Cola, Budweiser, they all wanted to be the title sponsor, but we were. We got in there first. And so we got a lot of popularity and a lot of respect. We also found out in this process, we did a lot of roofs for the participants, and they were appreciative of us. So we got a lot of respect. We got a lot of love. And then when we tied into the into the recruiting aspect, we almost established our authority as good people, likable people, and a good, respectable company because we are giving back, and which is a foundation that you've always said is not only are we successful, but we have to give that success back. So the foundation was there first and foremost for what we were trying to accomplish. Well, let's talk about Folds back. of Honor. Folds of Honor is a, a – this is a, started by a guy named Dan Rooney who wrote a book called Into the Wind. You can learn his – 12 principles. He was uh, a collegiate golfer and he became an Air Force, uh, very decorated uh, Air Force fighter pilot. And he created uh, a uh, charity for people who have lost their family members in, in war. And, and he said one time, uh, sitting on an airplane, he saw uh, so someone whose brother was carrying the casket of his brother on and the whole family was waiting for them as they came off of the uh, plane and he had never seen that side of it before and it made a lasting impression on him and so he decided to tie in his golfing what he did for fun in with what he did with work the air force and make something huge this this charity folds of honor that raises tons of money for families that lost people in service so for me to donate money to this cause and have an opportunity yeah. to position ourselves in the marketplace and change people's lives it, it was a no-brainer and um you know the one thing about it is that you know we we ended up talking to people um 
getting random people there, doing a lot of shoulder tapping in the area, getting some random people to show up. And, you know, the thing is, is that what everyone in that room discovered about me was that I care. I I really care about like the blue collar entrepreneurs that are watching this, the people that want to change their life in the roofing business, the people that are on my team. And the one thing that my purpose and passion in it is making them have true freedom. And what's true freedom? We define that as being able to do what you want, when you want, with who you want it, how you want to do it. It's not really going to have a financial meaning attached to it. You know, it's about being grateful for what you got right now and performing at your highest level so that you can truly, you know, basically there's a lot of evil going on in the world, distractions, crap, fake news, conspiracy theories, all that shit. A lot of it, there's a lot of truth to it. But I don't get wrapped up in it because I'm out here pursuing my best self, help, helping as many people as possible. And one thing I know is that our vehicle, storm damage restoration, solar cells, general contracting, putting money that we make from those things into real estate, that's that's a path to become a blue-collar millionaire and, and get above the pains of living paycheck to paycheck. And so uh, the pains of me sucking at golf are literally due to the fact that I'm, I'm – there's – I heard something really good this week. He said, if you want to get better, you have to look at the situation. You have to decide, what do I got to get better at? Okay. And there's three things you need to do. You, either your skills aren't good enough. Like you got a lot of skills to improve. Um, when it comes to leadership, one of the biggest skills I'm looking to learn is how to accept criticism better, how to be able to deliver authoritative instruction without being demonstrative, uh, how to lead better through numbers and accountability. And one of the, my biggest weaknesses is running my entire life calendared out, just calendared the fuck out. Like I'm, I'm a guy that likes uh, not regimen, but to work off of lists and priorities. I'm pretty good at doing that. But in order for me to condense time and to get to the next level, this is my biggest weakness right now. And so one thing I know is that if I want to be good at golf, that I'm going to have to go back and work on the skills. I'm going to have to get my swing right. I'm going to have to learn the short game. When it comes to business, the skills that I need to get better at are, are these issues. So what skills do you need to get better at? More importantly, next thing comes down habits, character, values. So, you know, as far as like, habits go and character goes if 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 i'm trying to be good at golf but i'm not i'm not looking like a good golfer like i don't have the habits of a good golfer what's what are the habits of a good golfer patience desire to succeed acceptance that when it doesn't go your way it's not the end of the world um desire to help others because you're not in it as much as it's an individual game. How many times when you're out with somebody else that somebody helps you? Yeah. And giving back, right? So when I'm out with my kids and I help their swing and I give them pointers, isn't that what you're also supposed to be doing is giving back in life, giving back to the new recruit? Isn't that what you're doing? You, you, one of your goals that you say often is that you want to help change people's lives. Mm-hmm. And it's not just your generosity and giving back to the folds of honor and donating money. That is wonderful, and it's charity, and it's great. But part of the recruiting event that you held was also the desire to change people's lives and give them an opportunity, as you say, to make more money than a doctor or a lawyer. That's changing lives. And so it is tied in with golf because... It is helping others get better at whatever they're trying to accomplish. And that's, in essence, all you're trying to do is give these people an opportunity at a better life through selling roofs. Amen. And so I just want to talk about, you know, habits being go to the driving range, practice putting, play one round a week. Now, consistency. let me talk about the habits of a $100 million roofing CEO. I read two or three books at a time, fucking... 20 to 30 books a year. I'm constantly consuming and spending my extra time with people that level me up. I'm very, if I'm spending a lot of time with you, you must level up around me because I take the people that I spend the most time with, I take their progress and if they're adding or subtracting to the mission, very serious. I also 
have radical candor, a lot of times I say things that a lot of people were afraid to say. I'm also, you know, you talk about things that are habits of a real successful CEO. I'm willing to take the money and use the money to love the people, not love the money and use the people. And so I've constantly demonstrated over and over. And I see all these people, they want to pull the money out. They don't want to take the time. They don't want to invest in the people. Even my own dad, who loves the idea of scale and very big, hates the idea of a roofing salesman not doing it his way, being entitled, walking away after not doing it right or starting their own company. It's, at so many times he's been through this, it's burned him. And it's like the trauma from bad shots have caused him to not ever want to hit any new shots again and the new shot is recruit hire train new people right and that's the business guys and number one thing that's habitable about me and jason will tell you we have a weekly management call what percentage of those calls am i harping on recruit hire train always 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 every day every is it sound like a broken record sometimes it, 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 look, but but in, but in essence it is and if you have to go to the driving range and practice it is a broken record every day but in the end, isn't when when mom said when your mom said to you, clean up after yourself, do your dishes. Is it a broken record? Yes. Do you have to wash your dishes after you do it? Yeah. You look at look at some of these intangible habits like risk is a down payment for success. I mean, me being willing to financially risk, take large investments into the big picture and big picture vision. If you're watching this and you you feel like you got you need to help skills recruiting guys. You need skills generating leads. You need skills being able to lead your team. We can help you with the skills. But if you don't have the habits, yeah. if you're not if you're not dude, I go to the gym like a fucking animal and work work out like I'm broke and fight the fucking hardest people in the gym for one. I have a lot of ang- anxiety, anger, and it's a good outlet for me and it's a good hu- humble. It's good for me to get my ass kicked from time to time by people that are better at fighting than me for me to be reminded. There's always a bigger dick in the room. There's always somebody that can kick your ass. There's always somebody that can fucking always. make more money than you. And you can't be constantly comparing yourself against other people. You just have to be trying to perform at the highest level and you can't be afraid to take the shots. Because the truth is the way you get better is you force yourself to, to take shots, to push yourself hard, to fight hard, and even when you don't have to. Just like in the sales game. That's why we compare and we say who's the best salespeople you want to aspire to get better, whether it's in golf or it's in sales, you want to aspire to get better. And sometimes you have to have a scorecard in order to determine that. The winner shot a 72 and you shot an 88, so you got to get better. The number one salesman sold 10 units, you sold three, get better by using the bad habits. You break it down, go to the range more, learn the pitch. That's why we practice the pitch. Daily, right? We have a habit in our RCA having a lot of contests. Yeah. We had a we had a sales contest, yep. and we made sure that we had two winners. One, we're experienced guys because we have basically the same badass salespeople that win all the fucking contests. Right. And what do you know? The badass Jeremy Johnson won the of sales course, because he has good habits and he, and he loves to win. And competition drives him, and he never fucking loses competition yeah, because him he and, says nobody's it's either gonna be him or Kevin and Yvette that win the competition every single time. But we made a rule. We said, okay. We're going to get someone else to win, but they're going to win, and they have to be new to the company within 120 days. Right. What a surprise that the fucking fighter from the MMA gym, Omar, kicks everyone's ass, turns in three jobs, signs up almost 10 new deals, and gets a trip to Vegas. And what we're doing in Vegas, if you're watching this, we're going to be at the IRE. We have a booth. We're going to be doing a punching contest, see if you can... Um, punch it harder than me. Uh, we have uh, a money machine, and I'm an, I've got version 2.0 of Contracting Gross Secrets. I actually rewrote the book, and we're going to have – I hadn't even seen the new copy or read it, um, but I'm very, very excited about yeah. um, picking that up. So more importantly, um, we're holding an event the last day with Brad Lee at his office at the Lightspeed headquarters. We only have a limited amount of spots, but inside of this like private meeting, all my elite clients are going to get a real training and everyone else is going to get access. Now, the, re- the reality is we don't have that many spots, but we're going to be talking roofing, solar, real estate, and it's an opportunity for you, if you're a roofing business owner, to future-proof your business, to learn how to generate leads, to learn how to build a championship team, to spend more time with us. But we're, we're going to be very selective with who we invite in. So we're, we're doing that. This weekend, Jason's coming to Vegas. It's going to be our first international roofing yeah. expo. Yeah. Um, but 
you know, it just, it, it, it really, it brings me to this, this big picture mission. And I look at Folds of Honor and I look at this guy into the wind and his, Dan Rooney has uh, blew up his mission. He's known uh, by millions of people as Folds of Honor and a lot of, he's done things in his career on a level of, He's, he's built an awareness and fame and movement, and he doesn't come from a marketing background. He doesn't come from a book writing background or entrepreneur background. That book, Into the Wind, is a faith-based book. And, you know, one of the things he talks about is, you know, the, the unseen things when you're flying a jet This and how the world is ran by these unseen forces. And uh, it's so funny uh, how much these unseen forces are actually – what make a great golfer as well, being able to see and uh, feel how much the wind is going to affect your ball, to be able to put the confidence and energy and good feelings into a future shot. And so um, it's just, it's really, really my mission. I'm working on a new book to get uh, people into the roofing business, get people into the contracting business and to write something that goes to the masses, that teaches them about how to go from just a person living paycheck to paycheck, understanding they don't have to do the jobs, they have to sell the jobs, but they can become a blue-collar millionaire through roofing, solar, or general contracting and putting that money into real estate. And so I've got this blue-collar gold rush thing I'm working on. I've been working on it. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be a little while. But reality is, is I look at a guy that does this fold, uh, folds of honor, and I'm like, man, this guy can do it. I can do it. And you know, that's why when this opportunity to sponsor his event came up, I was, I was right on it. Yeah. And, um, you know, if you're watching this right now and you want to take your game to the next level, um, we talked about the skills you got to improve. We talked about the habits we got to improve. But one thing we didn't talk about is belief systems. This is the third thing. It's only these three things that you got to address. Skills, habits, and belief systems. Okay, The belief system that many of you struggle with. Maybe you say, hey, Lee, you say recruit, hire, train, but people always let me down. It's hard to find people that want to work. I can't take the time to do that. I can't. I can't afford it. I don't have the right office. I don't have the right market. I don't have an office. I don't have a storm. What what, what are these stories? Well, they're the same stories over and over again. It's just they're just excuses as opposed to just you have to overcome them one at a time. They're all all those same excuses you just had are the same excuses you've had, but you've had to overcome them. If it is you got to hit the ball over water, move to the side or hit it over water. They're the same things that everybody faces. Admit them, discuss them, and determine how do I overcome them. For you and me both, we just happen to believe in coaching as a means to overcome them. We discuss them. Sometimes you're my coach. Sometimes I'm your coach. We discuss those. How do we overcome that? It's funny you say that because someone told me you can't do both. And it was one of my early clients. He's an influencer on social media. A lot of times people will tell you uh, things that you can't do because they can't do it. And I'll, I'll never forget this guy, Paul Reed, and his, his business partner looked at me and said, you're going to fail. You're going to fall flat on your face. You can't fucking be a coach and grow your roofing company at the same time. And there's so many times that I've questioned myself. There's so many times. The biggest challenge that I deal with right now is the people in my company want more of my time. And whenever they see me creating content, sometimes they resent the content or they resent the movement or they resent Sky Diamonds because they feel like maybe I'm putting more time into helping other people's and other people's business. Now, through coaching other people's business, the system has grown. And I've gotten the best from all the other people. My yeah. system, you, people that need my help, push me to be the best version of myself. So the whole thing grows. And not only do I learn from my clients, but I keep getting better myself hiring my own coaches. And I, I tell you one thing, whenever you start spending money on um, advertising, you get to test a lot of things. And we've spent millions of dollars on coaching, on advertising. And after five years, this thing that was driven out of ego, I wanted to be the number one roofer, most well-known guy on social media for roofing. <laughs> okay, that popularity contest, that shit will get you want to jump off a fucking cliff. The reality is, is that all I really want to do is I want to help people get into my industry and have just insane success so they can do whatever the fuck they want in life. And beyond that, I want to help more people do that than anything else. And my belief systems before were not, hey, 
go out there and positively impact 10 million lives in the next five years. And how does that make you feel? This makes me feel like I am literally a blue collar prophet. If you want to know the truth, we got a new show coming out called Blue Collar Prophet. I'm the Captain Swagger Jack. Marcus Lamonis, don't do it like me. Okay, we're going to go into home service businesses. We're going to show you how we double, triple, and quadruple sales in their business, take them from bankrupt to bankroll. I can't wait to fucking do it. But the point is, is that um, that same fucking guy, he's trying to do the same thing. He's building his roofing company. He's trying to do his coaching company. He was just late. And look, more power to him, but he's got to learn. Marketing is the way that you digitally duplicate yourselves. Automated systems and technology is the way that you can simplify, do more with less, execute with less overhead in the middle of the year. Jason comes in and we bring in a CRM overhaul, a complete overhaul of our operating systems. Sky Diamonds Hub, our automated follow-up system, text message, email, uh, schedule, our customer service department, calling all this stuff. All this is new to us. We like literally... We outgrew our company. It was all broken. And here we are on the internet saying everything's great. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm questioning myself. Can you do both? Can you do both? Sure. You're a hypocrite, Lee. You're a hypocrite. I have lots of past clients that were smart people. And until we released their smartness and had those discussions, because they wanted to hold on to that information. And all you've done is give away that free information. Mm-hmm. And although, and people criticize you for giving away your free information. And all that's done is grow your business, grow other people's business. More people will criticize you. People are going to criticize you no matter what. Criticize you for not growing big enough. Criticize you for growing too big. They're going to criticize you no matter what. But at the end of the day, you have to follow your mission, your belief. And the only way that you get better is to expose what you're doing with whomever. You just happen to expose it with lots of people. And that's how you grow. Work hard, play hard, but have fun doing it. See, I approach this contracting growth, this roofing self, just like it's a sport like golf. Like it's my passion. And the thing about it is, is that sometimes if, if, if you're getting beat up out there, it's either your skills aren't good enough, your habits aren't good enough, or your belief systems are fucked up. Maybe, maybe it's that you think marketing on social media won't work. Maybe it's that you think you can't uh, manage a door-to-door sales team. Maybe it's you don't think you can manage the money and the overhead expenses are going to put you under in bankruptcy. We can fix that. Those are all messed up stories you're telling yourself that aren't serving you. If you start telling yourself that you can, both of those issues have, are happening in the future. So you're lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself either way. You can either lie to yourself and tell you're a positive story. I can positively impact 10 million people in the next five years. I believe that the bottom of my heart. I believe if Grant Cardone can fill up stadiums for Growth Con, then I can fill up stadiums for Blue Collar Growth Con. You know why? Because I held an event on the same fucking day and we had just as many people and we made just as big an impact and we fucking dropped half a million dollars at the Blue Collar American Dream Conference. Changed people's lives. Next year, there's going to be 4,000 fucking people at it. Roofers, solar people, general contractors, regular people, the biggest influencers, the biggest sports stars. And I can't wait to do that. No one else is quite doing it like us. We're mixing it all together. We're the example. We're not the empty suit. And we do it for you to say, if I can do it, you can do it. Because I'm not nothing special. I'm unorganized. I got bad habits. I'm sort of crazy. I'm I'm the visionary. I'm the marketer and salesperson. But when it comes to operations, I need partners like Jason. And we're all in this together, right? Yes. We're all in this together. And And I always say, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, and I don't have all the answers. But what I do say is... I do have the processes, and you and I together, we can solve the problem. And everybody and all your uh, your audience and all your other contractors, we may not have all the answers right off the bat, but together we can solve the problems. And that's what the coaching does, is that it exposes an issue, we help motivate, and we solve the problems in order to grow your business. And it is working every day in our lives. More importantly, like numbers don't lie. Correct. A lot of bullshitters on the internet. And look, we are barreling down at building $87 million in roofs this year, but that's a very fucking conservative number. If there's hurricanes, this company is for sure blasting out of this nine-figure shell. Correct. And, you know, 
this is something without I, even without even talking about bigger commercial jobs that were that were potentials, bigger solar jobs potentially hitting two hundred two hundred million dollars. Yeah. So here's the thing: um, if I can do it, you can do it. And the biggest example I see out there on the internet is people trying to t tell you how to build your team that don't have a team. And to me, that is not to say they can't give you good advice on certain things, but there is a bit of just complete fraud to what they're coaching you. And one thing about what we coach is we get the best fucking results for ourselves, for our clients. We've got all kinds of different case studies. If you want to hear some of our best ones, go to to the moon contractor.com. And if you want to like double sales in the next 12 months, guaranteed, there's no one that's ever failed. That's done my system. Do the 30 day recruiting challenge, use social media to freaking blow up your lead feed and get a championship door to door sales team. Watch your business grow. This is really what it's all about is a duplicatable system. Just like if you follow the fundamentals in golf. Now I want y'all to see how RCA did at this golf tournament and get a little play by play on our summary. And Jason, I guess I'm going to have to Venmo you 500 bucks right now because you definitely kicked my <laughs> ass. I uh, didn't even finish the fucking front nine. All right. Y'all saw me tell the cameraman to get the fuck out of my face. It was going good. I almost had a birdie on the first hole. I'm fucking pars. It was, it was promising. It started off it well. It started off well. <laughs> Went down the shitter real quick. And maybe that's how your year's going right now. But you know what? You might you need. You can change it. You can. All you got to do right now is get on a phone call with me or the vice president of marketing. I even can have Jason jump on a phone call with you and help you out if you thought that he might be able to help your company. Because um, tomorrow's a new day. That's right. You can knock a new door tomorrow, right? Just yep. like it's a new hole. In golf, you're supposed to have 14 clubs in your bag. How many clubs do you have in your sales bag? And tomorrow's a new day. We can help you tomorrow build a new roof. Because tomorrow, all you need is the attitude. And if you messed up that hole, you can say, Lee, you can call Lee. Lee, I messed up that hole. But I could use a coach on the next hole. Let's go get him and put a smile on your face, and we're coming back for more. There you go. Now, I did get a freaking text message like, Lee, where the fuck are you? Because uh, Sunday, uh, I got <laughs> I got tired of not, not being in the action. I felt left out, wanted to get home, and I had these fucking knucklehead meth heads next to me in the hotel room. I get up early to start my day and write some stuff, and this guy's talking weird shit, and they're up all night, and... Dude, I had enough of that. In the middle of the night, I booked a plane flight home, and I left Jason to drive home from Panama City by himself. <laughs> He's like, man, you ditched the boys on me that quick? Like, Dude, I had to go, man. I wasn't there. But here, y'all check out what happened at the golf tournament. Uh, check out the book by Dan Rooney, Into the Wind. It was a life-changing book for me. Uh, highly encourage you to participate in maybe a golf tournament where Folds of Honor to, it, Folds of Honor is the charity involved because uh, all proceeds do go to families of service members, members who have been killed. And I want to say thank you to anyone who served. Uh, I really appreciate, you know, freedom isn't free. And the same goes for a blue collar entrepreneur. You got to fight for your American dream. And you know what? It starts with having fun in the fight. Thanks for being here, Jason. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.